Hello, this is Old Man Pool. I'll get to the drafts in just a second, but I wanted to start by saying that I, I really appreciate all your guys' support. Uh, over this last, I guess, Arab Devastation release weekend, I managed to hit 10,000 views on my YouTube channel and also 50 subscribers. And that may not seem like a ton, but it, it means a lot to me. And they're two pretty big milestones. And so I, I really appreciate everyone that's uh, liked and subscribed and uh, commented on the videos, everything that's given me support. I really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely the best. Okay, but now I need to talk about our pack because this is actually not an easy first pick. I like Omni Sphinx and Ambuscade quite a bit. Resolute Survivors I think is perfectly fine, but it is two colors. Everything else here I think is worse, although I do like the Devastator. I think I'm going to start off with the Omni Sphinx, and I'm not confident that's a better card. I think it's close. But we haven't actually played with this at all, and we have seen Ambuscade a couple times. So I want to get a, get a feel for it here. Ooh. Well, we could just go into a more controlling green-blue deck and pick up the, the River Hoopoo. Oh, man. One of these days I'll get it right. Um, it does mean we're slotting into a second color right now. It is a very, very powerful effect. And between these two cards, we can maybe pick that up right at the beginning and start drafting for a kind of a controlling build or we can take the safe pick which is the aerial guide aerial guide is also really really good otherwise i'm not sure that we'd consider it uh, this leaves us more open on colors and actually i think it's probably correct i kind of want to play the hoop hoopoo hopo goodness but hmm, I, I think i'm gonna pick the aerial guide i think that's the correct pick oh and who knows maybe maybe this will wheel or something maybe we have a shot at I think it's early in the draft, it's likely not to though. Someone will see it and jump in on the sweet green blue. Okay, well, green seems pretty open here. Um, so does blue. We can pick up another aerial guide, which I think is probably better than Vizier of the Anointed. Although I think it's close. I do like the Vizier quite a bit as well. I like Ronus' Stalwart, I like the Bitter Blow, Bitter Bow Sharpshooters as well. I think we're just gonna stay on color though. I think I'm gonna pick an aerial guide over the, the Vizier. Although Vizier's good. We'll play as many of those as we got. Okay. A less exciting pick here. We could pick up the Unsummon, which I think is better than Consign. Um, unless you know you're gonna be in black, and then I think it's probably Consign's better. Beneath the Sands, I don't think is what we want. Desert of the Oasis, or the Indomitable is not that great. Vizier of the True is a little bit interesting. I think it's high power, although I think it's a little bit less good with a bunch of flyers in blue. Sandblast is actually probably better than it in the way the deck's looking right now. I think I'm going to take the Unsummon, though. I, I do like having one or two of these effects, and it keeps us in blue. Okay. Yeah, green still seems kind of open, but we keep seeing good blue cards, so I kind of just want to want to stay the course. Uh, I like Spellweaver Eternal quite a bit. That's a pretty good two drop. It's pretty good if you're on the beat down, which I think blue has a pretty reasonable chance of being actual, actually. Okay, well, this is our first time where a blue pick isn't immediately jump out. So we could take the Sidewind Runaga and say, well, green was pretty. We saw a lot of green our first couple of picks, and so maybe a fair amount of it will come around. Or we could take like the Mar Marauding Bone Slasher, which I think is probably better, although it's probably close. I think it's probably better. Three toughness is a pretty big deal. We could take the Ruminap Ruins, although red doesn't seem particularly open. I think I'm going to take the, the Naga here. I think all these cards are kind of eh. I'm not wild about Tragic Lesson. I know some people like that, but it feels kind of expensive. Both in its additional cost and what it does for you. Okay. Yeah, maybe the green is getting picked up now. Uh, Dune Diviner I don't think is really what you want to be doing. Uh, Reed Stalker seems fine. Proven Combinant's also grudgingly playable. I'm going to take the Reed Stalker here. We'll just be flyers.deck. Well, hmm. Take another Sidewire Rodaga. Take Chandra's Defeat, which is... I don't think we're going to end up in red, though. Counter Mailing Winds is not real exciting, although it's okay. Desert's okay. I think I'm going to take the Naga. I guess if we do end up in green, maybe I'd rather have the desert, actually. Like that. Alright, well, this is our first pack back, and, well, I guess the, the Hopu was second pack. 
Oh, I can take Blood Water Entity. That is pretty good if we end up in blue red. And if it came around, that means that archetype's probably open. I don't love Strategic Tragic or Tragic Lesson. So I think I might pick that. Okay. The, the River Bird <laughs> didn't come back. We have two Blood Water Entities. So maybe we shift into just a blue, almost completely flying deck, but with some red synergies. I guess Gift of Strength over. Whole bunch of nothing. Love that planes art. I love all the art for all the full art in lands. That's probably not a real big surprise. Um, not going into the mill. Jason defeats playable out of the sideboard. Okay, well, we I guess are sort of blue red, although we could very easily ditch out on red and take something else if there's something great. Hmm. Well, Ring Sanity I don't think is really a card. But Burning Fist Minotaur is great, Sand Strangler is great, Quenchable Thirst is fine. So we don't have any on-color deserts right now. I wouldn't mind picking up a couple. We could pick the Sand Strangler right now and just try and grab a few. That is a very real payoff. I think that's going to be the pickup here. I do like the Burning Fist Minotaur a lot as well, but I think we're going to take the Sand Strangler. The ability to just shoot and kill one of your opponents is pretty good. Uh, Bane Whip Punisher, I think that's actually the first time I've seen it, even though I knew it was in the set. I, know it, well, I played against it once. It's pretty good. We could take Puncturing Blow. We could just take a third Aerial Guide. Aerial Guide's less good if we've got a bunch, bunch of flyers already, but I think we're going to take the Puncturing Blow over our third Aerial Guide. Hmm. I think we do want a little bit of hard removal. Chandra's defeat is a good sideboard option, but I think Trend Blow looks not bad. Uh, ooh, wow, what? This is an absurdly like Kevin's last word. This card is like, I, I think it's just one of the best bombs in the set. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna take anything over that. I saw the Eternal Force Truce, I was like, oh, that's cool. I've been wanting to try that. It's great with Aerial Guide, but I have to take the, I have to take the last word, I'm pretty sure. Never promise. I really want to open this card and kind of draft around it because it seems really powerful, but yeah, I don't know if we're really that deck right now. Uh, I think I'm going to take the Sunset Pyramid over Countervailing Winds. I've been impressed with this deck or this card if we're in a little bit of a slower deck. We do want to pick up some two drops, which we're not really seeing at this point. I don't like the Granitic Titan when we've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I'm going to take the Sunset Pyramid. This card does work. Okay, there's a Spellweaver Eternal, which we like. There's also a Desert of the Fervent. Mm, I think we need two drops more than we need deserts. Sorry, Strangler. I'd love it if this wheeled, though. I kind of doubt that it will. There are a couple of other good red cards in the packs. Well, yeah, it'd have to be one of the last three cards in the pack. It's, yeah, it's not going to be. But I think we need the two drop. Ooh, okay. Uh, two obelisk spiders in a row. Someone's going to be happy, I'm sure. Uh, getting a Desert of the Mindful is great, though. Happy to pick that up, for sure. Uh, another on summon. Take that, or Striped Riverwinder. I love having one on summon. Having two is a little bit less good. I think the second one's usually a sideboard card. And eh, maybe we'll take a Riverwinder here. It's not bad to have like, one of those in the deck. Uh, Desert of the Glorified. Uh, I think honestly I might just take the Solemnity here for the random one ticket. I find Kenner is okay. Maybe we'd rather have a two drum. Yeah, I'm gonna take the random, random value. There's another Riverwinder. I did think there was another one, so maybe we should have considered uh, taking the Unsummon over it. I'm gonna take a Countermailing Winds actually over the second one. Strategic planning, I don't love. Sonic Shunner's Defeat is a good sideboard card, though. I don't think Gifted Ceridon actually does that much for me. We have aerial guides and a bunch of flyers. I don't think we're going to be getting thrown on the ground very often. Oh, great. Eternal coming around is fantastic. Um, I guess Crash Through over the Titan. It works randomly well with, like, the Bloodwater entities. It's, it's a cantrip. 
Cantrips are never super bad. Burn Moloch's great. Alright. Well, I feel like uh, moving into red was not without some merit. We didn't. We still saw mostly blue cards there, but we picked up a couple of good ones. Bloodwater Entity I think is perfectly fine too. Uh, Captain's Last Board was a great pickup. Did not expect to see that. Third or fourth pick. All right. Uh, I think that the Blood Rage Brawler is just going to be the pick here. It's a pretty aggressive two drop. Works well with the Aerial Guides. Uh, not in love with your Gate Farmland. Uh, Hieroglyphic Illumination. Magic of the Guard. Not yeah, I think it's pretty pretty easy. Blood Rage Brawler. Hmm. I guess the Aven Initiate's probably the pickup here. Just keep with the Flyers. Don't love Scribble the Mindful. Don't love Nimble Blade Kenra. That probably will. Uh, Tamet's pretty powerful, but we're not in blue white, and we actually don't have that many things to take advantage of it. So, yeah, let's take the initiate. Not a bad pickup. Illusionary wrappings or consuming fervor. I don't love wrappings, although it is better if we're in the air. Consuming fervor. Pretty good if we can chop it on a flyer. And we are playing maybe kind of a tempo -y deck. We just drop it on like an aerial guide, it gets in for a lot of damage pretty fast. I have a really tough time knowing when I want this card and when I don't. Illusory wrappings I'm a little bit more confident in. Maybe the fervor's better. Yeah, I don't know. I should maybe commit and try and figure out that card a little bit better, but haven't yet. Ooh, we have an interesting choice here. We take the Grasping Dunes, which is nice with the Sand Strangler, and I think is fine on its own. Protusion of Knowledge is, again, pretty good, although we have a lot of flying. Like, the Aerial Guides do get things in the air. That might still be the pick. I think Open to Wonder is worse than either of those two. I don't think Grasping Dunes is going to come around, though. Right now we have exactly one desert. Bring on Sand Strangler is a real deal. And this is one of the better deserts. I think I'm actually going to take the Grasping Dunes. It might be might be loose, but it's hard to know exactly how much I, I need to prioritize for them. Uh, Sunscorched Desert, Evolving Wilds. We don't have anything that works with the Evolving Wilds right now. Uh, I guess we take like Floodwaters. It's fine playable. I uh, don't love Cancel if we've got Countervailing Winds as well. This is a, a unique effect. Ooh, getting a Warfire Javelin is pretty good, though. We're not as high on spell count as the blue-red deck definitely can be, but even if it's just one or two damage, it's pretty great. So. Uh, late even initiate I like. Winds of Rebuke is fine, but I think I want another initiate. Well, I mean, how many playables are we at? This might be a better sideboard card than another initiate. Is there anything we really want to cut here? Don't like Tragic Lesson. Or 23. Maybe wouldn't play the Illusory Wrappings main deck. Have two countervailing wins. I think I'm gonna take the initiate. <sighs> Nothing here. I guess we take Slither Blade. It's a late bone picker for sure. But I don't think there's a world where we play this, but it's blue. It's the only card that maybe we would. Uh, Illumination's not terrible. Is kind of nice. I think I like it better than Scribe, even in this deck. Now there's the Fervor. Did come around. I guess we can decide whether we want to play it or not. Uh, River Serpent or Open to Wonder? I like River Serpent better, honestly. I mean, this is going to be not dissimilar from Hydrothic Illumination in a lot of cases. It's really bad if you don't have any plays. Oh, oops, I took a, a little bit too long there. <laughs> Cancel. Well, River Serpent is. I think that was probably the pickup anyway, but it did take a little bit too long. Okay, I think the, the deck came together pretty well. Uh, it's funny, this is, I think, the third time I've drafted Blue-Red, and every time it seemed crazy open when I've shifted into it. So, a little bit. A little bit crazy. It feels like the, the archetype's pretty good, but maybe people are just... A little bit slow to just shift from Almond Cat where it wasn't the best. Take yeah, out Countervailing Winds. I 
think we play the River Winder over the River Serpent. I like Ominous Sphinx quite a bit. It's good with miscellaneous cycling. Let's shift these up. I, I just don't love consuming fervor. It's an enchantment. You have to be very aggressive, because if your opponent can just like bounce or something, it's bad. And it still kills itself eventually. I just don't love it. You can't it, you can't get it back from Bloodwater Entity as well, which is not, not completely irrelevant. Man, can't imagine getting back Kevin's last word multiple times. And the, the value in my brain just, just explodes. I am taking out the Kenra. I think the Eternals are they're both prowess. Eternals are gonna be better. I think this deck is beating down kind of as quickly as it can. I mean, it means the Reed Stalker's not our best. Well, if we're beating down, maybe even the Sidewinder's not that great. The Ominous Sphinx is just a 4 4 flyer with very slight upside, I think is fine. Uh, what do we like to play over one of those? Yeah, I mean, we could just play. Maybe we do just want to play 25. Especially with the Grasping Desert. Wait. Oh no, I didn't have a Red Desert, did I? It didn't come around. I could have picked it up. We've got those two. And one of them we can cycle away and one we can sacrifice. So, yeah, I think I'm actually going to keep 17 full lands here. Alright, the uh, deck looks pretty good. We have some decent sideboard options if we need them. Um, I think we are a little bit heavier blue than red. Not quite that biased, but I can see like 9-7 maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think the deck's actually pretty sweet. Uh, I'll see you guys for match one.